So uh, as I mentioned, PhD epidemiology program, make sh making sure uh, you're in the right session. So I'm gonna briefly go over the components uh, of the program, the timeline, the, the requirements, and I'm gonna also talk a lot about admissions, uh, what makes a, a competitive application, what's the process. I know there's lots of questions about that. Everything I'm about to say is on our website, and I put the link there, so it's dlsph.utoronto.ca backslash program backslash PhD epidemiology. Here you'll find, again, everything I'm about to say with a lot greater detail. I also encourage you to look at our student profiles and contact. Uh, I think it's really helpful not just to hear about the program, but actually to look at what our current students in the program are doing, who are they supervised by, the range of projects. I think that gives you a really good sense uh, of our program. So as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about admissions uh, first. I know there's lots of questions about that, and that's the deadline that's coming up. And then I'll talk about what how our program is structured, specifically around courses and thesis timelines. I'm going to mention DELTA, which is our Doctoral Epidemiology train, uh, Training Association, which is student-led, and we'll have the Delta leaders on this call just say a couple words about it, just so you know, I think it's an amazing uh, contribution uh, to the student experience for PhD epidemiology students. So first, admission. Um, so the most common questions I typically get during orientation are around what we're looking for on our PhD admission. So the first thing I'll say is that our PhD epidemiology uh, program is a research focused program. So we're focused on giving you the skills and training to lead research in epidemiology. It doesn't necessarily mean that that research has to take place in uh, academia. You can lead research as a PhD epidemiologist in lots of settings, but we focus on the skills for leading uh, cutting edge research in this topic area. So uh, I mentioned that because I'm so pleased that we also at Dalana have the doctoral public health program, uh, which was just recently launched. And this is a, a program that is uh, more for those interested in leadership in public health and have work experience. Uh, it's more, it's a bit more applied. I won't go into that program, but just to say that some, you know, sometimes we would get individuals that might be interested uh, in more applied training, leadership training um, to work uh, for leadership roles in public health. And this, the, our degree programs focus on, on research skills. So with that in mind, our candidates uh, that are offered admission typically have graduate training in epidemiology and biostatistics. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to have a master's in epidemiology, um, but they have some graduate degree where epidemiology and biostatistics training was undertaken. Um, and this is important because we do not offer introductory courses for PhD students. They go right into PhD specific courses where it's assumed that you have master's level, level training in epidemiology and biostatistics. I think that's a strength of the program, but it's just important to keep in mind if you're coming from a background without this training, um, it's difficult for us to offer admission because we want you to succeed in the program. Uh, we also look for some evidence of, of research experience. Um, so, and we have there with evidence. So what that means is publications and presentations. So we're very aware that people are at different stages of the career, their career. Some uh, individuals have had opportunities to work in research environments, so they might have more uh, outputs and some are just sort of nearly, newly finishing their training. So we take that into account. It's not how many you have, it's that you have some evidence that you've engaged in research in some way. And this might be, you know, obviously a paper, uh, abstracts, poster presentations, and depending on your career stage, we'll take that into account. Uh, we also look at your letter of intent's very, very important. Uh, and in this letter of intent, we're looking at your strong justification and motivation for doctoral training and specifically in epidemiology. So there's lots of great candidates that it's clear that they want to do a PhD and we want to hear that. We also want to hear why you want to do it specifically in epidemiology. We have lots of degree programs um, in, in U of T and also in the School of Public Health. So what is it about epidemiology that you're specifically interested in? Um, and that sort of relates to the next point, which is clear on why you want to come to Dalana and why U of T. And this is, speaks to an important question we often get. 
Do you have to have your supervisor and your thesis all worked out in advance? The answer is no. You should identify some faculty and potential topics to make sure there are faculty here that you could work with. And we generally know what topic area, but it does not need to be uh, solidified in advance. And in fact, I will uh, encourage those that are offered admission to speak to as many faculty as possible, as well as students in the program to make that decision. Uh, on the reference letters, it's really uh, ideal if they are specific and detailed and from people that actually have observ observed you, ideally in the research setting. Again, we're trying to get a sense that you have research skills and experience. Um, evidence of a potential thesis topic and faculty, I, I mentioned this earlier. Again, um, you can have preliminary conversations. Some faculty will say, you know, come back after you've been offered admissions. We just want to know again that your interests are lined up with faculty here that could actually supervise you. And some, some uh, applicants have very specific plans and some have uh, you know, sort of less formed plans and both are fine. Um, we also look at strong academic track record. The uh, academic uh, requirements are quite rigorous in this program. So we look for uh, indications that you will be able to succeed and uh, leadership qualities. Uh, leading research, in epidemiology and public health actually requires leadership qualities. It requires that you can work with other disciplines. Uh, it, it requires that you have uh, the ability to understand the core fundamentals of public health, which include, you know, social determinants of health policy. So we actually, uh, you know, like candidates that have some experience and uh, demonstrate leadership abilities. And just one more thing on the admissions process. And then again, at the end, you have lots of opportunities to ask questions. So please keep those in mind. Um, we do uh, participate, have a formal review process where multiple individuals review applications, and then we take the top uh, applicants in a short list and we do interview them. So if you are being considered for admissions, you will receive an interview. Uh, if you are part of the short list, about half the people on the short list uh, get offered admissions. Okay, I'm going to just quickly mention the, the coursework and the timelines. Um, and again, we can come back to these in the Q&A period. Uh, there are, there is 4.0 uh, full credit equivalents, we call them FCEs, that are required to graduate from this program. So 3.5 of those are required courses, and then you have to take one elective. You can take more, many of our students do take more, but this is just the minimum requirement for, uh, for, for this particular degree. And I'll just mention uh, briefly what they are. Uh, there's an intro to public health research course. This is sort of an overview course that's uh, now focused on teaching you professional competencies for PhD uh, students. Uh, then there's a research methods course, which is really about core conceptual and design issues in epidemiology. And then sort of an advanced biostats uh, course that goes along with it. And you have one in each semester. Uh, the research methods two course is really focused on proposal writing and grant writing. So taking those conceptual con uh, concepts and really putting them to practice um, in the form of a proposal or grant and ideally your thesis proposal if you'd like to start working on it at that point. Uh, there's also a, a seminar series which is required for your first two years. You're required to attend and present once a year your work in progress um, or any other research that you're involved in. And um, this is the other uh, biostats course in the second semester. And then finally, whoops, uh, there is an, uh, an advanced uh, causal mediation class. This happens in the second year. And again, after that, it is just your um, required, your elective course that, of your choosing. And I, I recommend people take a course that will really uh, tailor to their specific thesis dissertation topic. So this is the overview of the program and what happens in each, and I'll, I'll do it in a bit more uh, detail. So in your first year, it's really expected that you are applying for um, doctoral awards. You're completing those courses. Most, your first year is really uh, course intensive. So you're completing those required courses. Um, you're completing your ethics, TCPS ethics training, if you don't already have it. Um, and I'll mention here, this is where we ask you to finalize your supervisor and advisory committee. I mentioned before, some people have this uh, supervisor at least, you know, uh, confirmed right when they start. Uh, some take a little more time, uh, which is fine. And by December, ideally, 
uh, we want you to have your committee and your supervisor formed. Sometimes it goes a little bit past December. It, it, it all depends a little bit. That's just a guideline for getting you through the program, uh, which we recommend in four years. After the first year, you write a qualifying exam. This is a, a formal exam. It's written uh, for our exam. Um, it takes place in June. The specific date is determined. Again, this is an important part of our program to solidify your core epidemiology concepts. We, uh, uh, many of the people that graduate from our program go on to teach epidemiology. And it's important to have that comprehensive base above and beyond your thesis area and what's gathered in the coursework. Um, and then in the first year, often people will work on their proposal and, their, and some fundamental um, thesis work. In the second year, uh, there's that uh, additional uh, courses. So you're completing, you participate in your doctoral seminar. Um, there's the additional uh, course work requirement. I went over those already. Uh, you defend your proposal. Uh, at some point in the second year, typically, and you have to defend it by your third year to achieve candidacy. That's a benchmark, but most of our students do it in their second year. And um, after that, you have candidacy. And so this is important because after candidacy, it's really about uh, deep dissertation research. So you've done all your course requirements, you've defended your proposal, you've done your comps, and now you're working intensively on your thesis. And um, again, we aim for a four-year degree. There is a possibility for extension into the fifth year. There's a little bit of paperwork to do that, um, but sometimes the actual defense process, which can take a few months, spills over into the fifth year. This is when uh, uh, you would schedule your departmental defense. We have a two-step final process um, in order to ensure that you're ready for your final oral exam, and then you book your final oral exam and are complete. So uh, last thing I want to say, hopefully that gives you a sense of the program. I know you might have more specific questions, but I want to give you that brief overview um, of the program. So I just want to end off by saying, um, why epidemiology at uh, Dala School of Public Health? You might, I'm sure you're considering lots of other programs and there are some great programs across Canada and the US. I tried to point out here what makes our program unique and I think a strong program. So we focus on advanced methods and analysis as core skills. And uh, I think that this is a big strength in that we have PhD specific courses. So um, individuals that come to train here uh, are taking courses that are small. So you'll be in a class only with other PhD students and they're PhD specific. So the material, the style, uh, the methods of evaluation are geared towards PhD students knowing that you're working towards your dissertation. So they're much more tailored at that advanced level. Uh, U of T in general has a really rich and interdisciplinary community to connect with, of course, within Dalana, but beyond. So I just put a couple things here, the Data Science Institute, we have a Center for AI and Medicine, uh, Schwartz Reisman Institute for Technology and Society. We have lots of collaborative uh, programs, School of Cities, which is another great place. Uh, I mean, there's so many and I'm not even scratching the surface. Uh, but what I did want to relay is that uh, U of T uh, is unique in that it has top faculty in multiple areas. So that's what helps create this rich interdisciplinary environment. So when I mean, you know, top in, uh, top 10 or top five in medicine, computer science, public health, um, sociology. So all of these schools and, and faculties have strength. And so when they come together, it's pretty, it's pretty special for working on big societal issues. Um, the other thing I'll mention, which is quite unique, and, and Dean Brown mentioned this at the beginning, is that uh, we have a strong collect connection to the real world. And what I mean by that is a lot of our faculty as well um, that are, are that actually work and teach that you interact with in the classroom, as well as the faculty that are here, work with public health organizations, hospitals, governments, we're embedded in a lot of these organizations. Um, our Dean, as you would have seen, co-leads the science table for the pandemic response. So we have uh, play a, a strong role in what happens in public health more broadly, and this really enables the opportunity for impact. So I see our students having tremendous impact for like real world societal problems through these connections, and I think it, it's pretty special, and, and I know many of the students enjoy this. 
Um, we have strong connections to a lot of innovation centers that are in and around U of T. I put Vector as an example, but there are many. Uh, we have a big faculty complement, both core faculty as well as status, a faculty that are embedded in the research institutes in and around uh, U of T. And this enables us to cover a wide range of, of topic areas. So students that are interested in different topics can get that. And then lastly, I'll say that we have um, a structured program with clear expectations. And so again, depending on how you look at it, that may be a, a strength or, or, or weakness, but I, we have specifically done it this way for uh, those that are interested in a structured program. They're, they're for students that are interested in getting training not just doing a thesis, but wrapping training and experience around that. Uh, we make sure there's clear guidelines and timelines to ensure that our, even though our students are all working in really different areas, they have that guidance and structure um, and expectations. And we, we put a lot of value on the overall experience. So making sure you're having leadership experience, professional development experience, as well as uh, methods and analysis, which is core to epidemiology. So, that is it. I will stop um, sharing my screen. I will also uh, stop the recording uh, for those that weren't able to join us.